Welcome to Revise for Physics, the place where you revise for physics. In this video we're going to be looking at the Young's double slit experiment and we're going to be looking at the equation that explains the um, pattern of dark and light spots. Here I've got a pattern the dark and bright pattern is caused by constructive and destructive interference coming from two slits um, that have a, a light shone on it. Um, and as you can see in this diagram, I've got uh, two green lines coming from a point and they show uh, a small difference in the path Okay, so a path difference, and for constructive interference to happen, you need for that path difference to be equal to a wavelength. Now the two waves come from uh, two different slits, and then if we look over at the other side, I'm saying that there's going to be a distance here um, from a bright spot to another bright spot, so the central bright spot to a second bright spot. This distance uh, is just going to be the distance between the fringes. So I might use that term again, fringes. Now if we look at the original diagram, you've got a bright spot and then you've got a dark spot. The dark spot is caused by destructive interference where there will be a path difference of half a wave. Then you've got other bright spots where you have a path difference of one wavelength two wavelengths, three wavelengths. So in this diagram now looking at this diagram you can see I've got my two different triangles and one is made up of the rays going to the first bright fringe that's not at the center, and then the other is showing the distance from the screen that the fringes are on and the double slit. So the distance from the double slit to the screen, I'm gonna call D, and that's capital D, for distance. Um, so that's typically of the order of two to five meters, so it's the length of a laboratory and then you have this smaller distance here which is the distance from a central bright spot to the next bright spot um, and that labeled X is somewhere in the order of about a centimeter so D is a lot bigger than X quite considerably bigger now these two bright spots I'm just labeling just to keep the diagram nice and clear um, and you've got this red triangle being a right angle triangle now this right angle triangle is equivalent to this smaller right angle triangle over on the left and and that is because of um, the alternate segment theory. Now, the length here of the hypotenuse is equal to the slit spacing on the slit. Now again, this is quite a small size. This is somewhere in the region of one millimeter down to 0 0.1 millimeters typically and you can make the slit yourself or you can buy them in but it's obviously sometimes uh, a lot smaller this slit separation if you're using a bought slit again we've got a right angle triangle though and that right angle triangle allows us to compare the two triangles and say they're similar triangles um, because not only is it a right angle triangle, all of the angles in the triangle are equal. 
Now, importantly, the difference between the two green lines is the path difference. And for constructive interference to happen, that path difference must be equal to one wavelength. Now, I'm adding theta to both of the diagrams. Now, it would be impossible to measure the theta on the left in the smaller triangle, but it is possible to measure, using trigonometry, the larger theta, or, well, the larger theta. They have the same angle, but theta of the larger triangle. Now, the hypotenuse here is the from the center of the slits, um, and that's just been drawn in as a as an extra. We're not using that hypotenuse. Now, um, the key point through this whole experiment is that there is a path difference of lambda, and we'd like to find out that lambda. Um, so that's the difference between the two green lines, and I'm using that difference as part of the right angle triangle. Now here I've got the two right angle triangles drawn. The hypotenuse of the larger triangle is used to compare the two triangles. So it's an average of the two other green lines from the previous diagram. But quite importantly, you might like to remember that it's not exactly equal to either of them. But one of the assumptions of this whole derivation is that it is so very similar that you can say that it's identical in length. In doing so, we can talk about the angles theta being identical. Now we can say that because we've got two right angle triangles and z and theta equal 90 in both of those situations. One because it's at a 90 degree junction and the other because it's the remaining angle in a triangle uh, with the other one, the other angle. The third angle is a right angle. So the smaller diagram or the smaller triangle, we have a right angle triangle with theta and z and the other one we are at a 90 degree junction with theta and z. So we can say that these are two similar triangles, and then we look, when we look at the lengths, we have d and x, the distance from the slits to the screen, and the distance from one bright spot to another are d and x. And that ratio is the same as the ratio of the wavelength to the slit spacing. So we can say that because those are similar, okay, we can use some rules here. And we can say, right, if we're going to measure the ratio of x over d, then we can say that that then, when multiplied by the slit separation, will give us lambda. Now, sometimes that equation is used as it is, and in other situations, you might see it expressed as an angle. Now, when you have very small angles, sine theta is equal to tan theta, and that's called the small angle approximation. Um, it stems from the fact that for very small angles, the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is basically equal to the adjacent side. So using that small angle approximation, uh, you can say either um, x over d, or you can say uh, that that's the opposite over the hypotenuse, and of course opposite over hypotenuse is equal to 
sine of theta. Okay, so next of all we need to tie all of this together. You have to remember that x and d are two measurable quantities, um, x and capital D, and the small d might be a known slit separation, or if you've got vernier calipers or even a, a fine ruler, then you can measure your slit separation. So uh, we can have lambda is equal to x over d um, multiplied by the slit separation, or we can say it's lambda is equal to d sine theta. Okay, so finally, looking at what we've got, um, we have the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse can give us that lambda is d sine theta and that is because of this part here where sine theta is x over d in the original diagram so this is the opposite um, and this is the well, this technically is the hypotenuse, but because uh, sine theta and tan theta are equal, we use the d because the difference between the hypotenuse here and d is very small. Again, it's an approximation, but it is what the entire formula is based on. Okay? So, we take that. Okay, now we can keep our old formula that we had up here that lambda is xd over capital D, um, or we can add this to it. Now I've got an additional formula down here, and you might be thinking, where's that come from? Well, it doesn't just happen the once. Now as we saw at the start, this is a multiple or multiply occurring event. It happens again and again and again. So we have the central bright spot and then when there is a phase difference of pi or a path difference importantly of one wavelength or a path difference of two wavelengths or three wavelengths we get constructive interference again and again and again and again. So what happens is that as this is a regular spacing, by regular I mean it's an even spacing, we can say well this distance from here to here is half of this distance from here to here, okay? Or importantly this is double the distance this is triple, this is quadruple, okay? And that's this distance here. Now we also know that that's happening, those bright spots, because of a path difference of lambda, two lambda, three lambda. So for multiples of the wavelength in path difference, we get a recurring distance of x. So I've put x to the n here, so if it's the first bright spot after the central one, then this is just the first distance. If it x n um, at the third distance would be the third bright spot. Um, and basically this is where the equation comes from. Um, so that's it, everything derived, and it's crucially based upon two assumptions. The first assumption is that the angles up here are equal to each other, and then the second, that this distance here is equal to the path difference, uh, sorry, the, the paths of the two rays coming into here, 
and then when you look at the smaller triangle then we're using that to find the path difference and the path difference will be an integer multiple of the wavelength depending on which pattern you're seeing the first pattern the second pattern the third pattern okay i hope this video has helped with your understanding of where the equation comes from um, and feel free to just go back and look at sections again um, if you seem unclear on what's happening where and why okay thank you for watching